بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Once again we had this opportunity to read through the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam and take as much action plan as possible bringing the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam into our lives insha'Allah and we can see the benefit of practicing and implementing these verses within our lives. We have reached to the last verse of Surah Al-Hamd Sarat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdoob alayhim waladdaddeen Wallah guide me to the right path ihdina as-sarat al-mustaqeem which was the topic for the past three episodes what is that what is the characteristic of this path the path of those whom you have blessed such as have not incurred your wrath nor are astray it's very very important for us to understand these verses the reason why because we are reading these verses on a daily basis at least 10 times and the more we understand and the more we comprehend these verses the more we see how much we can uh, apply it and how much it has benefit within our lives before continuing with Surat al ladina and Amta alayhim, the path of those who you have blessed, a point about Ihdin as Surat al Mustaqim. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, guide me to the right path. Sometimes we ask, when we ask a direction from someone, He tells us this is the way, and you go and you will find it. But when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ihdin as Surat al Mustaqim, we are not telling Allah, we are not asking and requesting Allah, just show us the path. Rather, oh Allah, we want you, and sometimes a person is going that direction, or he's kind enough, he said, okay, I'll take you to your destination. Follow me. How much more security we will have when the person who has given us the address will accompany us. So, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم, oh Allah, guide us to the right path, into the right path. We want, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, be with, us, be with us throughout the way, throughout this journey of us. Because if you leave us to ourselves, even for a glance of an eye, we will be going astray. We will annihilate. We will be finished. So we want you, Allah, we want you in every step of our life moving forward. We need it. That's why, again, we read these, this chapter on a daily basis minimum 10 times. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم Oh Allah, be with me and take me and take my hand in this path towards you, inshallah. This was a point that we were not able to cover within the previous episode. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم Guide us to the right path. So the question will come. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم The path of those who you have blessed. Why in this verse we don't read and Allah hasn't mentioned اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الله or صراطي أنا Follow the right path. What is that path? Follow my path. Follow the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why it's not mentioned Suratullah or Sarati? Rather, it's giving characteristics, giving the path of those whom you have blessed. What is the importance of this? It's beautiful. It gives us a lot of action plans and it gives us a lot of indications and Ideas, how should we educate and inform other people also? We have two options. Either we can say what we mean as a concept, or we can bring a role model for what we are trying to preach. For example, if I tell my son, he got his driver license at age 16, 17, 18, I'm giving him a car. I tell him, son, don't drive fast. That's a concept. But that's one way to educate, inform, and teach. Other way will be tell him, son, a friend of mine, his son, also got his driver license about five, six years ago. He was 17, 18. He was driving fast and he, hadn't, he didn't have his seatbelt on. 
and he was not cautious and the road was slippery he he lost the control of the car and he hit the pole and he got into accident or he got something happened to him and God forbid he's paralyzed or he passed away we can basically not telling them a lie no the truth when we give them a role model when we give them the story, when we give them something that they can think of and place themselves in the shoes of that person, when he's driving, most probably he will be remembering, if i about to drive fast, probably I will get into an accident. So I have to be careful. I have to wear a seatbelt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us many things. Number one, this path already exists. Number two, he didn't leave it vague. That okay, Sarat Allah. Anybody can come rightly argue that okay, I am on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we didn't have any tool or any criterion or anything that we can judge. Is he truly on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? He would have left, he left us basically completely in dark. What is that Sarat? Who is truly in that Sarat for us to follow? So number one, he is, he is appointing the Sarat. Number two, he's appointing people who already been on that path. Number three, for us not to feel strange and lonely. Is it true? Is this path will get us to the right path? Is this the right, it, will it end right? Has other people been on this right path or not? Have they? attain salvation or not, all of these questions will be answered. Sarata Ladina and Amta Alehim. Oh Allah, the path of those whom you have blessed. So it shows we are not alone in this path, in this path. Other people have also been through this path. Other people have also attained salvation going through this path. So this path is safe, is secure, is straight, it is the best path that we can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What path? Sarat al and amta alayhim. And we need role model. In our lives, we need role model for everything. And we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order for, for, for Him to teach us, He has brought role models within the Holy Quran. That's why we see the stories of the lives of the prophets and other people keeps mentioning again and again and again. For why? For us, when we read the stories of the lives of the Prophet, especially, we will, put, we will put ourselves in their shoes. What they went through. And we might be going through the same problem. So what do we need to do? For example, rather than Allah giving us only a concept, be patient, be patient. Imagine if He wanted to just uh, tell us to be patient and had one verse. Kunu sabirin. This is it. Okay. What do you mean, Allah, be patient? How can we be patient? How much should we be able to intake and be patient? Is there a limit that after this, we, our patience will overflow and we won't be able to be patient? Allah gives us the story of the life of Prophet Ayyub ala Nabina wa alayhi salam. For example, we see within the life of Prophet Ayyub ala Nabina wa alayhi salam, according to some narrations, he had 12 children, he had farms, he had wealth, he had everything that people basically asked for he had it he was blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through a long story we're trying to make it short his 12 kids Allah took them took them away he lost all of his wealth he lost all of his farm he lost everything 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 within a very very short period of time and then he also lost his health he was no longer a healthy person he, he got disease and illnesses and to, due to, the, his, to, to his disease and illness, people also kicked him out of the city. They told him, we don't want to be next to us. Your sickness is contagious and we are afraid of you. They abandoned him. Who? A prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People abandoned him and insulted him. But he kept saying, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So when we read the story and the stories of the lives of other prophets and Ahlul Bayt we put ourselves in their shoes. Well, I lost my job. How much do I, I should be patient? I should be patient, thankful, appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what happened. I lost my kids. Well, Prophet Ayyub lost 12 of his kids. Not one, not two, not five, 12 of his kids. He lost all of his wealth and farms. It, add to that, add injury to the insulted in, in, injury. He lost his health also. 
and people started humiliating him and abandoned him and threw him out of the city. How much one can take? Still, he said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Also, we read, for example, we are within the, within the shrines of Ahl al-Bayt what Imam Hussein alayhi salam went through on the day of Ashura. Lady Zainab salamullah alayha, what she went through. Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura holding his son Ali al-Asghar, a six-month-old infant. How adorable this six-month-old infant is and how much love and passion Imam Hussein had for his son. He's trying to, he's asking the enemy for some water for him. On the hands of his father, they threw him a three-headed arrow and they beheaded him on the head of his father. And Imam Hussein takes the blood of Ali al-Asghar and he throws it to the sky and he says, this, is, this becomes easy for me and I am at comfort. Why? Because it is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is seeing this, I'm going to be patient. So when we bring stories, those people who are blessed why Allah is doing this because he's trying to show us okay there are people follow them as a role model and you will be on that path another story of the life of the Prophet where it can be an example and a role model for us is the life of Prophet Yusuf or Joseph he had many opportunities and many opportunities of sin was brought to him that he was able to commit sin but rather, he ran away from the sin. A'udhu Billah. He seek refuge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he, he ran away from the sin. What teaches us? If Allah would have just said, don't commit a sin. Okay, how I should not commit a sin? How should I prevent myself committing sin? When, how many times I've heard this from many of the youth that, oh, Shaykh, we are surrounded within sins. Sins are everywhere. Everywhere we look, left and light, left left and right we see sins well what did prophet yusuf did he's an example he's a role model where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought for us when he faced when he was locked and there were seven doors according to some narration and the historian that there were seven doors locked behind him and he was there with that woman and she approached him for haram for sin he didn't stay he didn't stay there so okay well there's nothing we can do everything is done Doors are locked. Astaghfirullah, Rabbi Atubale. Well, I can't do anything. He seeked refuge, refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. And then he ran toward the door. Even the door was locked. He puts the initiation. He puts the effort. He runs away from the sin. And he seeks refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah makes a miracle. And door after door after door was open for him. And he was able to relieve himself from committing sin. See again, role model. Another role model. Again, why are we bringing these role models? We're talking about Sarata Ladina and Amta Alayhim. We want to be guided to the right path. Which path? Allah says, the path that Allah has blessed. This is what we have to read. Oh Allah, we ask you to guide us to the right path, the path of those whom you have blessed. So He's bringing us role model for us to take these role models, apply the role model, and to be able to get closer to Him. Last but not least, the Prophet, Prophet Nuh ala Nabina wa alayhi salam. The preacher. Us as a preacher, when we educate other people, sometimes we might be discouraged. Sometimes if we don't see the uh, result of our work and our discussions and we get tired preparing lectures and, scenario and stories and so on and so forth, people are not being guided. People don't follow the right path. Prophet Nuh ala Nabina wa alayhi salam, according to the Holy Quran, he preached 950 years. How many years? 950 years he preached. And according to narration, only 80 people accepted him. That is so much hard work to put and very little result to get. Did he give up? No. He said, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will continue. No matter how many people accept me, I will keep preaching to people. I will keep preaching to mass. But I will think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing this nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if I see only a little result, which is 80 people. So rather than Allah saying to follow my path, where everyone can rightly argue that he is following the path of Allah, he has brought us the people who are on the right path as a role model for us to follow their footsteps, follow what they did, follow their teachings, and to be able to inshallah be on the right path so these right this right path has signs that we can find it what are these signs 
Who are these people who Allah has blessed so we can learn from them? Inshallah, it will be in the next episode. We will conclude by reciting Dua Al-Faraj, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging Him sincerely by the blessing of these verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Ma Mahdi ajrallah ta'ala faraj al-sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhihi sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'a. وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكن وردك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين